so um, that was a, a little bit of, of how Shakespeare set the stage, right? And um, we're going to move into the little, oh, look, we're getting a little romantic now. Oh. I like it. Yeah, don't you like it? It's a little more romantic? Yeah. Yeah, good. So we thought we would do for you uh, one of the uh, a piece of one of the greatest romances uh, ever written that has been copied over and over and over again. West Side Story was based on what? Romeo, Romeo. Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. And so we thought we would just give you a little piece of uh, some Romeo and Juliet right now, all right? Oh, that's a good one. Two households, both alike in dignity from Fever. But that's not what we're doing. That's not what we're doing. So, um, Romeo, having uh, uh, gone to this incredible party, and uh, he sees Juliet. He falls immediately in love, when just before that, he was in love with, uh, what was her name? I don't know. Rosalind. Man, Rosalind. Man, right? People. Rosalind, right? Got some Shakespeare scholars over here. That's good. We better not screw up, right? So, <laughs> so uh, he finds out where she lives, and it's sort of like, you know, the sharks and the jets. The Capulets and the Montagues, they were just, it's like the, uh, what are those guys in the Appalachians? The, uh... Capulets and McCoys. Say again? Hatfields and McCoys. Hatfields and McCoys. See, that was ripped off from uh, Romeo and Juliet. So anyway, he climbs, o he climbs over the, uh, the uh, all of the trees and the hedges and this and that. And then uh, all of a sudden he uh, looks and he goes, What's <clears throat> soft? What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east. And Juliet is the sun. <laughs> Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou her had maiden is far more fair than she. Or be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off. Love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks. If she says nothing, what of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. It is not to me she speaks. I am too bold. Two of the fairest stars in all the heavens having some business, do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres. <laughs> what if her eyes were there, and they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight doth a lamp. Her eyes in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. See how she lays her hand upon her cheek. Were I but a glove upon that hand, that I may touch that cheek. I, me, she speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel. For thou art as glorious to this night being on my head as a winged messenger of heaven. Oh, <laughs> Romeo. Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not be what sworn my love, and I will no longer be a captain. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak now? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What is Montague? It's not a hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face. Oh, be some other name belonging to a man. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would were he not Romeo called. Retain the dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo, doff thy name. 
and for thy name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. I take thee at thy word. <gasps> Call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth, I will never be Romeo. What man art thou that thus was created at night, so stumblest upon my counsel? By a name I know not who to tell thee who I am. Dear love, because my name is hateful to me. Had I written it, I would tear the word. My ears had not yet drunk a hundred words of thy tongue's uttering, yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo and a Montague? Neither, fair maid, if either thee dislike. How camest thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb, and the place death, considering who thou art, if any of my kinsmen should find thee here. With love's like wings did I o'erperch these walls. For stony limits cannot hold love out, and what love can do, that dares love attempt. Therefore thy kinsmen are of no fear to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. Alack, the there lies more peril in thine eye than twenty of their poets. Look thou but sweet, and I am proof against enmity. I would not for the world they saw thee here. I have night's cloak to, to hide me from their eyes. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than prolonged wanting thy love. By whose direction found'st out this place? By love. Mm -hmm. That first did prompt me to inquire. He lent me counsel, and I lent him eyes. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face, else would a maiden blush be paint my cheek for that which thou hast heard me speak tonight. Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say I, and I will take thy word. Yet, if Thou swearest thou mayst prove false. At lovers' perjuries they say Jove laughs. O oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Lady, by yonder blessed moon I vow that tips with silver all the treetops. Oh, swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon that monthly changes in her circle orb, lest that thy love. Prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all. Or, if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. If my heart's dear love... Do not swear. Although I joy in thee, I have no joy of this contract tonight. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden, too like the lightning, which doth cease to be ere one can say it lightens. Sweet. <laughs> Good night. Wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? Hmm. And what satisfaction canst thou have tonight? <laughs> uh, of the exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. I gave thee mine before thou didst request it, and yet I would, I have it to give again. Well, wouldst thou withdraw it? For what purpose, love? But to be frank, to give it thee again. Yet I wish for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love is deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have. For both are infinite. Madam! Oh, I hear some noise within. Dear love, Juliet! A god, good nurse! Sweet Montague, be true. Oh, stay but a little while. I will come again. Oh, blessed, blessed night. Being in night, all this is but a dream. Too flattering sweet to be substantial. Three words, dear Romeo, is good night. If that thy bent of love be honorable, thy purpose, marriage, send me word tomorrow by one that I'll procure to come to thee where and what time thou wilt perform the right and all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Madam! I come anon, but if thou meanest not 
Well, I do beseech thee. Madam! By and by I come! <laughs> I beseech thee to cease thy strife and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow I will send. So thrive my soul. A thousand times. Good night. A thousand times the worse to want thy light. Love goes toward love as schoolboys from their books. But love from love toward school with heavy looks. <laughs> my sweet, Romeo, my sweet. Oh, one o'clock. Tomorrow shall I send to thee? Uh, by the hour of nine. I will not fail. Tis twenty years till then. I have forgot why I did call thee back. <laughs> well, I will stand here till thou remember it. <laughs> and I shall forget to have thee still stand there, remembering how I love thy company. And I'll stay to have thee still forget, forgetting any other home. But this is almost morning. I would have thee gone. And yet, no further than a wanton's bird that lets it hop a little from his hand like a poor prisoner into his twisted jives and with a silken thread plucks it back again, so loving, jealous of his liberty. I would, I were that bird. Sweet, so would I. Yet, I should kill thee with much cherishing. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say goodnight till it be morrow. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeffrey Combs. <laughs> on stage at the day, so the very first person, and for years and years after that, uh, to play Juliet was a young man. I'd just like to say it takes a real man to play a woman. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I would pay a lot of money to, see, money to see Jeff Combs play Juliet, let me tell you that. And you know what's interesting to me, just hearing it right now when we were doing it before you, it's fascinating because it's not until you really get to be this age that you really understand what they're going for. Because they, they were teenagers. You know, they were teenagers, and it, it, it takes us years to sort of get the fact how innocent and profound and passionate their love was, rather than just act. And he, if you notice, uh, when you study Shakespeare, it's, it's all about rhythm, 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 rhythm. And the rhythm of these lines just move like this, this uh, adolescent love, and it's just an exquisite thing to hear. So, uh, my only disappointment is that I didn't get to kiss Juliet today. So I uh -oh. <laughs> 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 Jeffrey, go. 